Hello again and welcome to my railway and a very happy Christmas to you all watching this one today wherever you are. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really means a lot. And thanks again for joining me to all my regular subscribers and viewers. So I think today we will get the Thompson L1. The Thompson L1 being the loco you see in the shop there on track number one. It's got some open second suburban coaches behind it. These are Backman items that are weathered uh, by Backman. And they just make a nice set to go with the L1 that's weathered, also factory weathered from Hornby. Um, the reason I'm running this today, I wanted to kick off this video with a little nod to the services that used to run on Stratford Low Level in the 1950s, the North Woolwich, um, by Thompson L1. And they used to often support these suburban trains that are low level branch to North Woolwich and there's some cracking photos in, in a couple of books I have actually. If I swing around the camera very quickly uh, where my reference library is, um, you'll see right at the end there there's London's East End Steam and London's East End Railways both by Dee Brennan. Um, there's a trilogy of those books I've got and they are incredibly uh, informative uh, and for all the uh, steam fans in the East End of London during the 50s they are must have in your library so I've got them. Um, but yeah, it's got loads of pictures of Thompson L1s in, and when the Hornby released the L1 model, I thought definitely it's got to be a must for my collection. One of the locos that I'm hoping to get in the future is another Oxford Rail um, N7 in British Railways or weathered black as on Stratford Shed before they all went in 62. Um, so that's one for my collection definitely in the future, but in the meantime, I'll get this train underway and we'll enjoy the trains today. So see you in a moment. Okay, so before we get this train on the way, um, I'd just like to bring a point to attention. Um, somebody made a comment on the previous video. It wasn't necessarily a bad comment, but I just want to address that comment. And the person I think didn't like the sound of the block bells in the background. Um, if you haven't seen the video before or know about what I'm talking about, um, I self-designed and built this little bit of gadgetry here, um, which is my block bell instrument simulator uh, based upon the... Okay, so before I get this train on the, on the way, well, on the railway today, um, I'd just like to go over a point, uh, not literally a railway point, but um, a comment point. Um, somebody made, I think it was on my last video, about they didn't like too much the sound of the block bell. Um, noise in the background, the bells ringing. Well, basically, my little railway, little Beddington, which is six by four, it's only a very small layout, as you can see, but it's my little piece of railway. That I get enjoyment out of setting up every single Saturday on the weekend. And it's my little outlet of free time, relaxation, mental health, and also a chance for me to recreate my days on the railway. Um, I did 19 years on the railway, the full-size train set, and the first earlier part of my career, uh, was spent up in the signal box and this is where I learned about the block bells and the unique communication system that the signalman would talk to another signal box, another signalman down the line about what he wanted to offer him in terms of train services. Um, so that is why I have recreated that in miniature um, with the block bell instrument apparatus. Now I know that I haven't got the train online token block machine I haven't got one of those, unfortunately, because uh, I haven't got the space, uh, or should we say the money, because they're well expensive. But anyway, I've done the sort of the basic idea of miniature, and you know, if you like it, you like it, you don't, you don't, that's up to you. Anyway, so I need to get this train on the way. So first of all, I'm gonna give the signal box uh, a call of attention, which is one. Wait for one back. Thank you. What do I wanna send him? I'm gonna send him that passenger train over there which will come under a three and a one. So I'm gonna offer him that three and a one. He's given me a four and a three, which means lines clear up to the home signal. Thank you very much. Right, let's get the train underway. So here comes that Thompson L1. It's running bunker first with the Stratford Shed disc codes on the back there. 
And typically, this is like a North Woolwich service, so we can get the idea what that would have looked like back in the 1950s. And I think what we'll do, we'll also bring this J15 off shed, and I think we'll go and pick up those wagons at the same time, I think. Bring him there, just to the crossing temporarily. Change those points. Bring him back. And we've got those. Okay, we'll take him to the outlet signal. Hold him there. And away he goes. So we've got two Stratford machines running now. So we've got the J15 on track number two with the little short um, fitted goods. And then on track number one, we've got the L1 Suburban Service. And interestingly enough, the first vehicle behind that J15 is a fruit van. And that definitely would have been steam heated because it would have carried things like bananas straight from the docks, straight from the West Indies and the Caribbean, straight to the docks in, um, in the Port of London docks, the King George V docks, no doubt. Uh, one of the big major city docks. And then it would have been transferred directly onto the banana vans, steam heated, to keep it nice and humid, for the bananas to stay nice and fresh. And all sorts of fruit would have been put in, obviously, fruit vans, but they were steam heated, basically, so that would have kept the temperature nice and um, perfect for fruit, more so for bananas. I remember years and for years and years in Stratford, um, a place called Channel Sea Curve, which has now been taken up by the Olympics and the um, Retrack configuration of, the, of Stratford in general, railway-wise, Stratford's become unrecognisable now. 
the amount of track work and redesign they've put, they'd had to put in to do with the Olympic Stadium and all that rubbish. Um, but before, there used to be a spur going off of, of Stratford on, on the main line through loads of crossovers and crossings and scissor crossings and diamonds. You had a spur going round what was known as Channel C Curve. And as you went round Channel C Curve, in the wide way, in the space next to the track, there was one of these. There was a an old wagon body on the floor and it was actually a fruit van. It was one of these. It was one of those. Um, and I think it was used as an old storage or tool van, but it'd been there donkey's years. I remember it as a kid and later on in life, I remember seeing it there. That was a really old relic from the steam days. Yeah, the, the old banana van. Um, Maybe some of you watching this video who are familiar with what I'm talking about in terms of area at Stratford, and remember Stratford area railway wise, uh, you may re recall or remember that banana van sitting there. Um, I certainly do. Anyway, that's enough about bananas. It's just a point of interest. Another piece of useless information you always get when you watch my videos. Yeah, steam heated banana vans. It's interesting actually, because in those days, in the 19, well, after the sort of post-war Britain, um, we started to get a lot of imported fruits that we never saw during the war. Things like bananas and pineapples and all the exotic fruits started to appear in the shops and greengrocers. And uh, it must have been quite magical. I think my mum was talking about this the other day where she said the first time they ever saw a pineapple at Christmas time was, was just amazing. Like, what do you do with this strange looking thing? Um, of course, nowadays we take for granted all these things that we can buy in the shops these days, but in the 1950s and certainly after post-war in Britain, a lot of imports were transferred by railway. So the good old banana came to us in the old steam heat banana van. Okay, next up we've got this Gresley K3 class loco on the front. We've taken the Thompson L1 off and just stuck this lovely K3 on the front. Um, beautiful little short Gresley engine, um, but don't be mistaken by its shortness. In reality, it was a very powerful, very fast little freight engine because it had um, smaller driving wheels compared to larger driving wheels of the Pacific loco of the day. Um, and that was designed for a reason, to give it much more faster an even haulage. Um, a bit like the um, the Green Arrow V2 locos, um, they were the same things as that, a little bit. Gresley took the design of the V2 uh, and gave it a little bit of character with this particular loco, um, the K3s. So I'll get this on the way now. This is a Backman item and it's factory weathered, but I've added a little bit more weathering on it. Um, you know what I'm like. I wanted to give it that Stratford look. Anyway, I'll get this going and we'll have a look.
tell you what, those open seconds make a lovely sound going over that joint. Really sounds good. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do now is just reverse this goods train and bring it into the loading dock. Here she comes. Taking it nice and easy. Going across the crossing there. So we just asked the signal box there for is the line clear for a light engine and we just got the response line clear at the home signal so that was for that loco going around now light engine we stuck the um the k3 suburban in the loop in the middle platform waiting for that to get out of the way and it makes its way around the layout and there it goes Okay, well with that shot, I'm afraid it's time for me to go. So thank you very much for watching today. Um, I know it hasn't been that much with trains, but I hope you did enjoy what I have run. 
and I will definitely see you um, at some point either over Christmas or in 2024. But in the meantime, I want you to stop and wish you all a very, very happy Christmas and hope you have a great time with you and your loved ones and friends wherever you are around the world watching. Um, have a very safe and very blessed Christmas and take care. And thank you for all the thumbs up and subscribe and all the comments and all the lovely um, words you've said on my channel this year. It really means a lot. Uh, no doubt I will see you before the new year with another video. In the meantime, God bless, take care, happy modeling and Merry Christmas.